Hi, I'm Tune Shrivastava. I'm the CEO and one of the co-founders of Base 10. I'm speaking with Shravan Narayan from IVP. Um, IVP led both the Series B and Series C at Base 10. Do you want to just start off by with uh, how did you, you know, notice Base 10 and what, yep. what really stood out to you yep. um, that got you excited to invest a little, over, a little over a year ago? I think the first thing I remember about Base 10, I was going back through my notes, was the fact that I'd emailed you like three times and then you didn't respond to me. Yeah. And then you actually sent me a screenshot later of the fact that you knew I emailed you and that and that you still didn't respond to me. Uh, but the actual first meeting was really interesting because normally, in, as you probably know, with uh, investors or founders, there's like an area of seriousness around the meeting and you just kind of walk into our memo office and you're like, so what should we talk about? And then you kind of went through and systematically talked about why inference is going to be the next great market that everyone should be paying attention to. Because at that time, most investors were focused on training, on fine tuning, on model providers, and no one had really turned their attention to inference. Um, and it was very exciting to see you systematically deconstruct why it was going to be an amazing opportunity. Yeah. Um, is there anything that stood out to you in the, when you think about deconstructing that? Sure. That, that was interesting, that inference? I think it was the spend potential, for sure, of the entire market. It's a thing, there's a lot of latent demand. And then part of inference is just, it's really, really hard to build properly. And so companies have been trying for a while to solve it in-house and they hadn't been able to. And not only were you able to talk about why that's a big market, you are also able to show why your base sense years spending really deep infrastructure was going to pay off in a really big way. Awesome. Um, there's a lot of parallels, I think, to the data infrastructure market. Sure. Um, and I know you spend a lot of time in Snowflake and Confluent. Yeah. Can you talk about, you know, what, what seems similar yeah. to that? I think the there are a couple of things that stand out, especially in comparison to Confluent Cloud or Snowflake. If you can build an experience which takes the difficulty out of people's hands for something that's mission critical, it's really, really hard to build first. And then it's really hard to convince people that they should trust you for something that because it, it's truly the lifeblood of their product. But if you're able to build that and able to build a magical service, then people come to you in droves. And that was the vision that you all told us about. It's a similar thing to what got me excited about joining Snowflake in the first place. It's that you separate compute and storage. You can build a magical experience that allows people to run things at a level of scale they couldn't do before without having to staff up, staff up a giant team to manage it themselves. Amazing. And then over 2024, obviously, we all saw kind of people take notice of inference as a market. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, what, what got you excited to, you know, First, think about doubling down and eventually yeah. get really excited about the business. Yeah, revenue growth helps. Uh, but in addition to that, in addition to the revenue growth and team growth, I think what we were able to see over the year was how you were even better positioned than the year before. And that's a combination of all the hard work you all have done from a product standpoint, um, all the hard work you've done from a go-to-market standpoint. And when you look at it, it's very easy to not look at something with fresh eyes, but when you look at it with fresh eyes, we're like, it was just such a no-brainer opportunity to continue partnering with you all and, and find a way to make this great company. Amazing. Um, what are you excited about for the coming year? I mean, even though I think there are a lot of us that are excited about inference and everyone at this table and at this company knows what a big deal it is, the world, it's still very early days for it. There's still so many companies that don't realize how everything about how they build applications in the past is going to change and how AI is going to be a part of it all. And I think that's going to really start to hit people over the head over the course of this year, especially in the enterprise. Um, and so we're really excited to see that happen. Awesome. Um, shifting gears and just kind of going a bit more into market stuff. Um, we've seen we've seen a ton of interest from enterprise, especially in the last few months, um, that you know, they, they're realizing that AI products, like AI efforts need to exist. Yep. It's strongly to go online. Yeah. To some degree, have you seen similar? Um, and like, and you know, can you just speak a bit to, you know, what are the some of the challenges that you're seeing enterprises? Yeah, I mean, to? to bring it kind of similar to parallels in the past, and when you're going, whether it's going to the cloud or bringing on AI, there's always like a pretty standard path that enterprises are going to go through, where you're going to have some skunkworks team that's going to test it out. Then you're going to start using it for internal use. And then only after all that is done, when people have confidence, are they going to start using it in production? And that's the thing that is so hard to do properly. And so I think over the last year or two, all these enterprises have been testing with it. They had these AI teams that have spun up, uh, but they haven't figured out how to get things into production at scale and do so really reliably. Um, and that's just consistent across all of them, whether it's an enterprise, whether it's mid-market. And I think this year they're going to start to realize that and they're going to look for services that can help solve that. Yeah, fantastic. And what, what do you think the catalyst there is? 
the catalyst is always someone is, is them finding a true partner who can be with them for the next three to five years, who can first help catalyze an awareness and understanding that there's a solution for this problem that they have and that, and you can show that. And then as they start to work with you, they realize this is someone who's going to help me in my own job, that the person who buys base 10, that they are going to get promoted for buying base 10. That is a type of partnership that people look for. Um, and without that, it's just very hard for them to get confidence in, in moving these things to production. Yeah. Amazing. Um, all right. G going back the other way, you know, we, we serve a lot of amazing customers that, yep. you know, you all work with a bone, and you, um, but when you, when you think about the AI companies that are selling into the enterprise, especially in the application layer, how can um, startups best position themselves to, you know, to be good partners? Yeah. You know, you're saying people are looking for good partners. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, is there anything you view as different about, um, you know, selling the app layer to the enterprise than selling to large companies or big growth stage companies? I think m the fundamental problem is the same, which is that no matter what stage you're at, you want people you can trust building a product you can trust who can you can start with and scale with and that they can also solve more problems for you than you didn't even realize ahead of time. And so that's going to be the same whether it's a growth stage company or a, large, or a later stage company or an enterprise. I think the difference is that enterprises aren't as aware. And so they have to go out and look a little bit harder to find these products, uh, whereas growth stage companies are always looking to find them. But besides that, it's really about being that trusted partner the entire time. Amazing. And then... Let's think about a bit about, you know, I, th I think a, a, a viewpoint we have at Base 10 is that there are proxies, different proxies for the enterprise. Mm. So for that, for us, that's, you know, again, we, we are selling to companies who need infrastructure, obviously. Yep. But for us, that's, that proxy comes to the fall of companies, that application layer companies that are selling to the enterprise. Um, I think another one that looks like the enterprise is high growth startups in regulated industries. Yeah, yeah. You know, one of our customers in a, in a, in a portfolio company is Value Peter Bridge. Um, which sells to, you know, into healthcare. Um, how have you seen the highly regulated industries yeah. respond to AI? I know we talk about government, I know we talk yeah, about healthcare. Yeah. yeah. Actually, in some ways, we've seen more of an uptake from them than we have from most enterprises because the users there are just so starved for anything from the 21st century. Like the products there have not changed in decades. The experiences have not changed in years and years. And so there's finally this way for them to stop doing so much manual work, stop making so many errors, all that sort of stuff, and really have products that help make their job better. Um, and AI is the first thing that is, and it is the thing that's enabled them to, to have those solutions for the first time in years and years. And so we're actually seeing probably more adoption from healthcare, even from the government, from financial services than we would have seen in, in prior, in yeah. prior shifts. Yeah. That's, that's the crazy thing even for us, which is, you know, it, it turns out that these buyers are a lot more rational. They yeah. probably have given them credit, like slow to adopt. Yeah. Is probably just um, code word from our perspective of didn't see enough ROI. Yeah. Um, awesome. Um, at the end of the day, you know, you, you work with a lot of founders. Yeah. Um, you know, they come to you in various forms. And, you know, for the ones launching app AI applications or building AI startups, what's a piece of advice that you'd give them? Biggest thing is speed. There are so many different competitors out there and so many companies out, of, out there that are trying to solve similar problems. Anything you can do to offload non-core activities to another company, to another product, such that you can move faster than ever before, you just have to do. Yeah. And you don't really have a choice anymore. Um, such as inference. Such as inference, exactly. <laughs>